Hello and welcome to the Richwood North Union Public Library's History Department exhibit, Dressing the Decades, a celebration of Richwood's clothing stores from 1880 to 1940. Journey with us as we explore the evolution of women's fashion from the late 19th century to the mid-20th century. Feel free to continue browsing through the exhibit while the video plays. Before the Industrial Revolution, most textile and garment production existed on a small scale in home workshops called cottage industries. Merchants dropped off raw materials to the workers' homes, where production relied on self-pacing and included low and highly skilled work. A spinning wheel is a device for spinning thread or yarn from fibers. It was fundamental to the cotton textile industry prior to the Industrial Revolution, it laid the foundations for later machinery, such as the spinning jenny and spinning frame, which displaced the spinning wheel during the Industrial Revolution. The basic spinning of yarn involves taking a clump of fibers and twisting it into a basic string shape. The spinner continues pulling and twisting to make it longer and longer and to control the thickness. Corsets were an essential part of women's fashion for about 400 years, from the late Renaissance through the early 20th century. Although constricting, they were essential to achieving the fashionable silhouette and were positively identified with qualities such as self-discipline, social status, and beauty. White was the prevailing color for corsets during the late 19th century, but black corsets were recommended for wear under dark clothing. Widows often wore black corsets as part of their mourning costumes, Fashionable women wore layers of petticoats, most of which were made from plain white fabrics. Brightly colored petticoats began to appear during the 1860s as synthetic dyes became widespread. These vivid styles were often worn over more subdued examples since the topmost petticoat might be glimpsed at the hem of the wearer's skirt as she moved. As women became increasingly active in leisure activities and in different segments of the workforce, they took sartorial cues from menswear, particularly the suit, the emblem of civil society. These designs combined the simplicity of the suit with fashionable feminine elements such as puff sleeves and long full skirts. The corset style of the early 20th century rested low in the breasts and extended over the hips. When laced, the corset pushed the breasts forward, pressed in the stomach, and arced the back. The resulting shape was referred to as the S-curve, monobosom, or pigeon breast. Although the style was visually alluring and pioneered by female corset makers, it was highly constricting. The early 20th century silhouette adhered to the severe shape created by corsetry and emphasized a voluptuous, statuesque figure. High necklines were used to elongate the body. The use of delicate materials and intricate embellishments was common. Hats were an essential fashion accessory during the early 20th century. Hat-making, also known as millinery, became a popular career option for many middle-class women. It also provided women with a chance to start their own businesses. Hats assumed extreme proportions, often reaching up to two feet wide, and their size largely contrasted with the fashion for comparatively slender dresses. Known as picture hats, they were perched on voluminous hairstyles and appeared as though they were floating on women's heads. In the book, History of Richwood, 1832-1976, written by the Carp Diem Club, Nell Ross, the mother of Monk Ross, had this to say about clothing in Richwood in the early 20th century. We had several milliner stores. Every lady wore hats and gloves to church and always to funerals. We would wear leather gloves to drive, then leave them in the buggy and wear white gloves. Some had elastic in the hems and were above our elbows. We had several nice stores. A.I. Glick had men's clothing, boots, and shoes. He was where Spire's five cent and one dollar is at, 17 North Franklin. Mr. Glick also kept ladies' shoes. One day I was window shopping and a pair of shoes in the window caught my eye. So on Saturday night when we went to town, I took my father to see those shoes. I tried them on. They fit perfectly. They were black patent leather with black cravenet tops. The buttons were shiny black with silver bead in the center. When Dad inquired the price, Mr. Glick said, Four dollars. My poor Dad moaned, Four dollars? That will take four bushels of wheat to pay for them. 
I got the shoes. Can you imagine what the price would be now? During the 1920s, fashion was radically transformed by the boyish look known as La Garçonne, exemplified by a tubular silhouette that de-emphasized the breasts and the hips. As hemlines were shortened to the knees, women were no longer hobbled by their clothes, which facilitated physical movement. By the 1910s, some women had abandoned their corsets in favor of more modern undergarments, such as girdles and brassieres. 1920s fashion is also defined by the archetype of the flapper, a term used to describe the modern, increasingly independent, and fun-loving women of the era. Evening dresses lavishly embellished with beads and sequins have become associated with the flapper style. This slinky dress, decorated with machine-sewn iridescent sequins, would have sparkled on the dance floor and accentuated the movements of the wearer's body. Its hemline would dip slightly lower in the back, foreshadowing the longer hemlines of 1930s fashion. 1930s styles evolved during one of the most tumultuous periods of Western history. Set between two horrific world wars and in the midst of the catastrophic economic depression, fashion of the decade still managed to exude elegance. Many dresses were cut on the bias a technique that allowed the fabric to stretch over the body in a way that enhanced its shape. Slinky dresses that resembled slips or nightgowns grew in popularity and accentuated an ideally slender, lean body type. The range of outfits for sporting activities expanded during the 1930s, mirroring the growth and technology that made sports clothes lighter and more functional, Colorful, often patterned knit sweater and skirt sets were commonly worn as golf attire. Stretchy knit garments allowed for a full range of motion while swinging a golf club. Window pane and stripe patterns added a subtle decorative element, while the coordinating self-tie gave the look a feminine touch. As more women joined the workforce during the 1940s, suits such as this became integral to their wardrobes. These fashions assumed a more masculine silhouette that included wide, padded shoulders and narrow hips. Women's labor was essential to the war effort during World War II, as many women had to take over jobs previously held by men. Female factory workers often wore denim jumpsuits known as boiler suits, a uniform that allowed for freedom of movement yet eliminated the danger of skirts and sleeves that could get caught in machinery. Graphic artist J. Howard Miller famously depicted a woman flexing her bicep in one of the suits, and the image was used to recruit workers and boost morale. The female laborer in this image became known as Rosie the Riveter, and her boiler suit became a sartorial symbol for her patriotism and contributions to the war efforts. And there you have it, a captivating journey through the ever-changing landscape of women's fashion. From the elegant silhouettes of the past to the bold and diverse styles of today, we hope this visual exploration has transported you through time and provided a deeper appreciation for the artistry and creativity woven into each garment. As you navigate the exhibit, take a moment to reflect on the stories these clothes tell, stories of societal shifts, cultural movements, and individual expression. The fashion choices we make not only shape our outward appearance, but also serve as a reflection of our collective history. Whether it's the corsets that restricted movement in the name of elegance, the liberation of flapper dresses in the Roaring Twenties, or the groundbreaking innovations of modern fashion, women's clothing has been a powerful instrument of change, empowering individuals to challenge norms and embrace their unique identities. As you explore the exhibit, delve deeper into the stories behind the dresses, the accessories, and the advertisements that adorned the storefronts of our town. Each piece represents a fragment of a larger narrative, connecting us to the past and inspiring us to shape the future. We invite you to engage with the exhibit, ask questions, and share your own stories and memories of fashion. Let us celebrate the resilience and creativity of those who have come before us, and let us honor their legacy by embracing the ever-evolving world of fashion.